Hello, my name is Joe Fox and I'm from the team at eYachts. Today we're going to take a look over the award-winning Pardo 38. This is the first Pardo 38 in Australia and it is the smallest Pardo in the range all the way up to 60 feet. In between those two sizes, Pardo comes in a 43, a 50 and more recently just announced a 52 GT which is a really exciting new model. So we're going to take this boat out today, we'll look through some of the options, the drivetrain options and the layout, just to give you a picture of what this boat has to offer. As we're heading out, I'll just talk through the helm station that we've got here. Now we've got a, a very, very kind of sleek and elegant dash design. As per the other Pardos, this is from the same factory as the Lamborghini carbon parts. So along with the T-top, it's designed in carbon fiber. So on the dash in front of me, we've got a Raymarine plotter, very intuitive systems, got all the information that we need on board. Over here, we've got the Mercury vessel view. Um, now this is connected to all three engines. Um, gives us all our RPM, fuel consumption, trim levels, um, everything that you need to know that's engine related. Just above that we've got the Fusion Stereo, a great sound system on this model, six speakers around the whole of the boat, giving you a really nice sound both at an anchorage and when you're underway. We have the three outboards on this model, um, that comes in conjunction with a Mercury JPO. Now this is a very clever system, allows you to move the boat essentially on a, on a dime uh, very easily without having to get the, the wheel and the, uh, the throttles involved. This also features a sky hook. So we're moving along slightly now, maybe two or three knots. If I press the sky hook, the engines will engage themselves to keep the boat in a position. This is really great for preparation coming into a marina. Right in front of the helm seat, this middle seat here, you've got everything you need. So you've got your two throttles, three engines, only two throttles. Now, if I engage one throttle, it only does the engine on that side. If I engage the other throttle, it only does the engine on that side. The middle engine is only used when engaging both throttles because that gives you the most control and power over the maneuvering of the boat. Other features on here, we've obviously got three ignitions. An active trim system, which uh, takes control of the trim buttons on the throttles. So depending on your speed, this can um, change the angle of the engines to help with um, efficiency and to get the planing angle of the boat. Adjustable wheel, which is very nice. So we have the comfortable helm seat here. So you're in a sitting position here. Um, you can move the wheel up, put the bolster up. Now this is my favorite position, um, kind of one leg slightly bent, maybe one leg on the footrest down here. Last but not least, just to help us move sideways and to help control the bow of the boat, alongside this, we have the bow thruster here. Here we have the anchor winch controller. This is a really smart system that extends out from the front of the boat. On some models, you can also display a camera onto the plotter so you can see over the bow, over the front of the bow, so you can see the angle of the chain and where the anchor is. So we'll start here on the bow. Access to the anchor is in here. There is a hardwired remote um, which can be accessed through here with a chain counter on it. So if you're operating the boat with crew, um, or if you're confident to leave the helm, you can come up here and drop it manually if you like. In here, we also have a boat hook and some great fender storage. So it is wet, there's a drain in it, wet storage. Now this bow area, you will notice the large and comfortable looking sun lounge. Now this is a very clever system because the sun lounge only sticks up maybe an inch and a half above the gel coat rail, but the cushion is actually inset into the bow. So the, the cushion's actually probably three inches thick, but with it being in set, it makes it a very clean looking daybed um, and also prevents wind from getting underneath. So you're not relying solely on those press studs or those, those fixings to hold the cushions down at 40 knots. Um, you've got a good slipstream 
going over the top. This also comes with a cover, so you don't have to take these cushions off. When at the end of the day, you pop the cover on and there is a bolt rope track here along the front edge. So you can even leave the cover on if you are going offshore or going at speed and you're not going to use this part of the boat. On either side of the sun lounger and towards the aft, there are two large drinks holders. It is possible to shade this area as well with a shade cloth. There are two carbon fiber poles, one in each side here, and a black shade cloth that goes back to the front edge of the T-top. This gives this whole area, especially on a day like today, when we have got blue sky and sunshine, um, a nice bit of shade. So you'll notice as I'm walking down the side decks, I've got a lot of room. I'm not having to turn sideways, even up here where it is a little narrower. When I get to this point, which is where people I think will spend most of the time, especially when you're underway, the side rail is a really good height. Now this is great because it'll give people a lot of uh, security and comfort. There is a handrail here. So when you're transversing this area, maybe at speed, and you've got the wet bar here moving out to the edge, you've got a handrail here to, to hold on to as you come further aft. Now inset into the gunnel of the boat is the fender storage. There's a provision to store four of the Pardo fenders. Um, this is a very nice feature because when you're coming into the dock, they're right here, they're already on the rail. It's just a case of getting them out into the quick release and having them ready to berth the boat. Down each side, there is a step. Now, if you're parking against a quay or pulling onto another boat, a much bigger boat, where you have to step up, um, this is a very good point to step up from. When it's folded away, you wouldn't really know it was there. It all looks the part. Moving further aft, we have the gunnel door. Now, this is an option from Pardo, um, but it's a very clever way of opening up the rail of the boat. Um, you know, if it is not possible to board off the stern platform, or if you're alongside another boat, that's easier to board sideways. And also, when you close it up, it really doesn't take away anything from the boat. You wouldn't even know it was there, really, unless you were, you were looking for it. So on each gunnel towards the stern of the boat, there's obviously a filler cap for each fuel tank. The water tank, so water filler here, along with the stern shower here. Now this is hot and cold. There is a 40 litre water heater on board and that's powered off the inverter or shore power um, if you're alongside. Also at the stern here on this side, we have the provision for a stern ladder. Now the engines that we have on this boat are the triple 300 V8 Mercury engines. Now these are an option. Uh, the boat comes as standard with a single inboard diesel engine. Now you can upgrade this to a twin inboard diesel engine with stern drives. And what this gives you is it gives you the option to have a large platform on the back of the boat. There are also a number of outboard choices, one of which we have here. You can opt for a double or twin 300 V8 Mercuries. Um, you can go with the twin 350s, which is a slightly older engine. It's an inline six engine. Um, or you can do triple 350s or triple 300s. Now you might be looking at this aft area here and think how are those engines going to trim up? Now it's a very clever system, um, but underneath here, there are two little bolt catches. And when you're back in the marina, just before you pack the boat up um, at the end of the day, it's just a case of lifting this up and that gives plenty of room. You can see the, the engine well down here, plenty of room for the cowlings when the engines trim up to get the props out of the water. An important feature with this is the safety alarm. In order to prevent you trimming the engines up while the stern platform is still down, uh, there is a safety alarm that will warn you, you know, as you start to trim the engines up, stop, lift the platform, and then you can lift the engines. So with the engines uh, trimmed down and this stern platform in the deployed position, it creates a very easy to maneuver um, flow around the back of the boat. There's just one thing I'll talk about while I'm here is the elegance of these cleats. Now these are like a frosted stainless finish on top, engraved very nicely with Pardo yachts. These are incredibly flush and, and elegant to look at when they're not in use um, to operate, simply a case of lifting them up and you can use them as a functional cleat. It means 
you know, as you're walking down the side of the boat, you might have loose clothing on, ladies might have skirts on. They're not catching on these cleats. They're, they're stowed away. They're not getting in the way when you're out using the boat. This area at the stern, as well as being a great dining area, also doubles up as a sun land. The table has two leaves on it, so it comes out the full width of the seating. So I'd say eight people, maybe a couple perched on the end here. There is a button down here. The table will drop down and then we can put the infill cushion on. Now this really is quite, um, quite comfortable. I mean, we've got a very solid back here. So if we were at speed, um, you'd have no qualms about sitting back here. So you might be wondering how I protect myself from the sun. Now the answer to that is just up here. Now mounted on the back edge of the carbon bimini, we have an electronic sun awning which can come out. It's a uh, quite a clever system. You'll see it coming out now. I've got my finger on the button just down here on my left. And this extends unrolling the fabric automatically almost all the way out. And there we go. We have a well shaded area here at the back of the boat with this. This is a really good height. You know, I'm six foot. Um, it's not over my head when I'm walking down the side of the boat. Um, and as I go in to sit, it's obviously well above my head. So it's a very uh, you know, usable solution to, to sun protection at the back of the boat. Now this can be used underway. Um, obviously not at breakneck speeds, but you know, cruising 15, 20 knots, it is quite a solid structure and it is protected um, by the uh, Bimini. So the T-top on this Pardo 38 is a standard feature. It's a standard feature on all Pardos across the range. And it is an incredibly high quality carbon fiber. Um, now, as well as being very strong and rigid, uh, carbon, as many of you will know, is also renowned for being incredibly light. Now, this really helps with the performance of the boat, keeping all the weight down low. Any weight, you know, up here is as minimal as possible. In the ceiling of the T-top, there are four windows. Um, these let in plenty of natural light. Uh, we've got lights on in here today. In this daylight, you don't really need that on at all. Um, they are tinted, however, so they do keep a lot of the heat out. So if you are here working at the wet bar or at the driver's uh, helm, the helm station, um, you are well protected from the sun. Lighting in the T-top shines down onto the table at the aft section, down onto the galley or the wet bar in the middle. And at the front edge of the T-top, we've got red lights which shine down onto the dash. So crucial for navigating at night um, so that you don't lose your night vision um, with stark white lights. Now, moving on to the most important place on any boat is where do we get our refreshments, our drinks and lunch from? Now, this is the wet bar situated just in front of the table at the aft end of the boat. Now, in here, we find quite a large sink. This is connected to the fresh water tank on board. So we've got 180 liters of fresh water. So washing up, rinsing the champagne flutes and showering on the back of the boat. Also here, we have an induction cooktop. Now this runs off the inverter from the battery bank. Perfect for frying up your lunch. So either side of the central working area on the wet bar here, um, the two useful worktops um, for food prep, what have you. Underneath the wet bar is where the magic really happens. Down on this side, we have an ice maker here again, powered off the inverter. In here, we've got a few drawers of storage, nicely finished uh, varnished wood internally with a bin. Last but not least, in this side, we have the fridge. This is about a 60 litre fridge. This isn't the only fridge on board. We do have two smaller drawer fridges, which are just down here under the seat, which is part of the dining table. Now, these are plenty big enough, one on each side. I'd say there's about, you know, 10 to 15 cans. So there is plenty of refrigerated storage on board this model. So while we're in this location, we'll have a look at the Lazarette. If you were to have the inboard diesel engines on board, then this would be the engine room. So I'll jump down there now and just show you what we've got in the guts of the boat. So coming down here, there's obviously plenty of space because we don't have um, the diesel engines in here because we've got the outboards on the back. But either side, you can see 
in um, in boxes. We've got 1,000 litres of fuel, so 500 on each side. These are connected to the isolators which we saw on deck previously. Here we've got the water heater, 40 litre water heater. Um, this is on all the time, as long as the inverter's on. Now you'll see behind me, um, we've got the Master Volt 3,500 watt inverter. Now this supplies all the 230 volt power um, to the boat when you're not connected to shore power, turning 12 volt battery power into that domestic power that you can use for things like water heater here or the induction cook shop or your hair straighteners down in the cabin after a nice hot shower. There's a very um, sophisticated fire extinguisher system down here, obviously, you know, it's a safety feature on the boat. Um, this fire extinguisher um, can be operated from on the deck level um, in the event of an emergency, specifically if you do have the engines down here. But, you know, really nice working space, plenty of space for access to batteries, electronics, um, and also great storage, you know. So we've got the, the, the cushions for the, the table up top. We've got that down here, the um, poles and the, the sun awning for the bow canopy. Very nicely finished. So the final area on this boat, and quite possibly the most impressive, is the double with twin cabin setup that we have here. Now, this is the, um, the biggest in its class in terms of volume inside. We also have the head here, head and shower you can see that we do have plenty of standing headroom. As I said before, I'm about six foot and I've got a good few inches above me here. So for a shower here, it's certainly not gonna to be too claustrophobic. There's also a toilet just aft here, um, but it's a nice, you know, enclosed, there's plenty of natural light. We've got a frosted glass above us just here, um, a nice mirror and then ventilation here. So it's got everything you need in a bathroom of this size. So as you move around the internals of this cabin, you'll notice uh, the lovely quality Italian oak that we have on this model. This is the standard wood. It's got quite a nice matte finish, so you know it's not going to show up um, grease, sun cream marks, that kind of thing. There are other um, wood options available as well as a um, high gloss varnish option also. Moving up to the front here, we have a V-berth. It's um, worth noting that although this is a V-berth at the V, the pointy end of the boat, the, um, the bed is not actually V-shaped. So the sides are actually parallel, um, which make it a very comfortable bed. I mean, it's almost a, uh, a domestic size bed that we have here. It's also nice and low. So a lot of V-berths at the front of boats, they are quite raised up. Now this is because obviously the bow comes up at the front to get that width across the bow you have to raise the bed. Um, but what Pardo do, and you'll notice it from the outside of the boat, um, that reverse bow and the width in the beam carries a long way forward, allowing us to get quite a lot of beam quite low down at the front of the boat. We've also got a FM, AM and Bluetooth radio control down here, so we can isolate this area from the external speakers. Well ventilated on either side. Now you'll notice that these windows you cannot see from the outside of the boat. The hull is a completely solid hull, no windows. That keeps the boat looking really smart and sleek. Um, but these windows are actually in the walkway. Now they do let in, you know, quite a lot of light and the ever important ventilation should you need it. There's also another window or hatch just up here. Now this is a, a classic Lumar deck hatch. It's underneath the cushion on the front of the boat. So removing the cushion or just opening the hatch um, will get a nice um, cross breeze of air coming down. There is a block out blind and a fly screen as well. So you can have it open um, when it is hot and humid. So underneath the bed here, and of course, making your weekend a bit more comfortable, there is plenty of storage as well. Coming in behind the staircase, we have the ever important twin room. Now this is a perfect setup for kids or uh, other family members that you might want to have on board. It is connected to the main cabin, as you can see here. Now this keeps this nice and open. Um, the stairs that come down are not solid. They're stainless, just with the treads. So there's lots of airflow coming through here. There is an option if you do want to seal this off to give the people in this aft cabin a little more privacy. 
either side there's plenty of storage you know if you're on here for a couple of days that's where you'd put all your clothes your towels your swimming gear so we are quite low down here and as you can see this is relatively low we're under the floor of the helm station but just after that and under the helm seats you'll notice uh, quite a high void in the ceiling now this is very clever because it allows us in this aft section of the cabin to have a window here be it for ventilation or just to allow additional light in. We do have lights up here. What this means is that you do have a lot of headroom. So for getting changed, you can stand up. Now I'm standing with my head fully extended, no problem. You know, a very livable place. We've got USB charging sockets here, so you can plug your phone straight in, PowerPoint here, and then obviously reading lights. So the final part of the operational side of the boat that we haven't talked about yet is this very sleek, looking electronics cabinet. Now this isn't over complicated, but we've got all the standard things um, that you would have on a, on a switchboard in a boat. In the roof here, we have a tinted skylight. This lets in a lot of light, um, which really brightens up the area, but it is tinted quite heavily. So it's gonna keep down those really hot um, UV rays, those sun rays coming in, heating the cabin up. So there you have it, the Pardo 38. As you can see, this boat in 38 feet, it really does pack a lot of punch. We're lucky enough to have another Pardo 38 coming in available towards the end of 2021. If you would like to find out more about the 38, the 40, the 50, the 52, or the Pardo 60, do get in touch on the link below. And if you have enjoyed this video, do give us a like and a subscribe to be updated with lots more content like this. I'm Joe Fox from E-Yachts. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm gonna go for a little burn now, so thank you.